tried not to. I tried to slug it back. I called for it. And this is what happened. This is what happened. Hey, good morning to you. Good to see you this morning. Let's jump up on your feet. Let's go, man. I'm running late. I'm terrible. Love it on people. How many yesterday you either came to the event yesterday or you worked the event we had on the campus? Can I see your hand? Can we thank the Lord for all these people, everybody? Good gracious. Whoo, it was crazy. We had a house full of folk. I don't know how many hay rides that I did with uh, Keith and Heather on the big tractor, but all I know it was so many, I nearly fell over. It was crazy. Thing ended at 1, but we stayed on to about 1.30 doing hay rides yesterday. Fall festival, big deal yesterday. Praise the Lord, I got some great people here with you this morning. Second hour, second hour, and I announced it that way. You'll have Congressman Greg Stubbe. Yeah, let's thank the Lord. He'll be right here, right here. He's going to be preaching. Amen. But you got me the first hour, and my message is on the miracle of Israel. And we're going to talk about it today, and I'm going to take you down a little memory lane a little bit. It's going to be a good message. And if, you're, if it's your first time, I'm Pastor Gary Clark, and I'm wore out already, okay? Did I complain already about how many hay rides I did? You know I'm a whiner, is that correct? Amen. Also got a buddy here. I've known him since he was a young boy, and his name is Phil Mockler. He represents my warrior's place. He's also, now you ain't coming up now. Stay right there. He also uh, <laughs> grew up in Inglewood, but he also serves uh, as, a, as one of our police officers with Sarasota County. Let's welcome him in the house today. <laughs> Amen. Also on the front row, one of my good buddies from the Christian Television Network, Mr. Paul Ladada. Would you welcome Paul today? I love you, buddy. Proud of you. Amen. You're going to hear him sing in a little bit. Did y'all know that? He's going to sing a song. He sure is, but we'll wait a little bit. I want you to sweat a little. Amen. Come on. We're looking forward to a great day today. Hope you can stay with us all day if you can. And a lot of people are going to be coming in the next hour. I'd love to see this place filled up. Amen. But right now, let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. That's where you live. Don't give up. Don't give up. Anybody can give up. Amen. You stay strong and see if the Lord don't help us. Amen. He's good to us. Amen. Got a great song. Great to see the band with us today. And Sherry was away last week. We always miss you when you're away, girl. Amen. And I know you had a big, you had a big thing last night, didn't you? Or you, you, had a big, you had a big singing last night. You're about shot, aren't you? You think you can make it? You think you can make it? Come on. You're probably like me. When you get real tired, you get stronger. Come on. Yes. A little crazy, though. Y'all ready to have church? We're starting out with his great name. Let's thank the Lord we're in church. Come on. We're having church now. Here we go. Let's do it. Thank you, guys. We love you. Let's sing together. Come on. Welcome today. Lost our sea, found the way at the sound of your great name. Oh, can feel no shame at the sound of your great Every fear has no place at the sound of your great name. For oh, the enemy, he has to leave at the sound of your great name.
was staying for us The Son of God and man Oh, you are high and lifted up Say it again. King of my heart. King of my heart. I love this song. Hey, y'all, y'all doing pretty good. You seem like you're doing pretty good. Amen. So glad you're here for the first time. Perhaps yesterday you were at the Fall Festival, and today's the first time you've been to Fellowship Church. And I'm glad you're here. I'm Pastor Gary. I was doing the hayride yesterday. I told the people on the hayride, I said, y'all know why I'm doing the hayride. They said, because you love Jesus, you love people. I said, no, because my wife made me do this. I do love people and love him, but I also love football and the air conditioning. <laughs> but I was out there, I was out there, man. We weren't like dogs yesterday, but if you're one of those who came, thank you so much. We're us, you get to be you. We're not better than you. When I first went to church with my drunk mama, thing was in my mind. They gonna steal our money. Church gonna steal our money. And number two was, I'm not good enough. I'm gonna be looked down on. We nothing. And so, man, I fought against that, and we fight against that here. You are somebody. You matter. Say, I matter. I have value. I'm not a piece of garbage. No, and he'll never throw you out. He said, I'll never, ever, ever, nobody can pluck you from my hand. That's a great God we serve. Amen. Let's sing about it one more time. While we got you on your feet, king of my heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, ooh, 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 let the King The anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are the
Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you again for being here today. Pretty good crowd this morning. Thank you for coming today. And I got a feeling next hour, some of y'all are going to stay. Y'all hear me or not? Don't know if you know Congressman Stubbe. I met him a while back. I was speaking after him at a big event. <laughs> and I thought I was the preacher. You know what I mean? And after he got up, and it wasn't a religious thing. It was, it was a thing, a big event to honor uh, police officers and firemen and and I think uh, I mean they had big big dignitaries were there and all that kind of stuff and uh, he was before I got up and when I heard him I was like oh my gosh I cannot believe an actual congressman is quoting the scripture correctly and who would even do it in front of a crowd it wasn't at church it wasn't at church he didn't have to do that you know he's gonna take it for doing that you know what I mean and I got up and I told the crowd, I said, y'all don't need me. <laughs> Man, this guy just preached. And after that, I went over to his table and I said, you know what? I said, I want you to come to a place called Fellowship Church in Inglewood sometime. And I want you to preach God's word. I said, I believe you can preach. He said, he said I think I can. I can preach. And so that's how he and I met one another. Amen. And he came last year and preached here. How many were here for that? Did he preach or am I lying? That's a truth. So it's going to, I don't know what he's going to talk about today. I know he's going to share that he had a, a horrible fall that could have killed him. It was in the news and all that. Could have killed him. I think he's going to share a little bit about that as well, how God helped him through his sickness and his hurt and how God raised him back up. Amen. So he also served our military and uh, he's right from here. So I think you're going to have a good time if you get a chance to stay. Looking forward to a great, 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 great morning. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you because you loved us first. Lord, thank you for loving sinners like me. Lord, you are so good to me. You've never, ever, ever, ever let me down. I've let you down so many times. You're the faithful one when I've been unfaithful. So God, we honor you today. Lord, we don't want to have church without you. We could have these different folk here today going to speak or sing or do that. But Lord, as good as that is, Lord, Lord, it's all going to be empty unless you come. So, Lord, you say in your word, where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the middle of us. And so, Lord, we're here in your name, your name, Jesus Christ. We believe you're the way, the truth, and the life. We believe no man can come to the Father but by you. Lord, we don't believe they can get it from just going to church. They've got to come to you, Lord. You're the one that died on the cross. You rose from the dead. We must put our faith in you. So, Lord, we're here in your name. We believe in you. Lord, and I know you believe in us. Be in our church today. Be in our midst. Lord, I pray you'll go up and down these aisles and touch people's heart today. Lord, I pray for people. If they died, they don't know they'd go to heaven. They don't know. But Lord, I pray today they'll not leave like that. I pray they won't leave lost. 
Pray no one will turn that key in that car thinking, I'm good. I'm good. Lord, I pray every single one will come to Christ today. Every single one watching online or with us here. Oh, God, that's our prayer. You're not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Lord, I'm on your team. And Lord, I want, to, I want you to be paramount, and I want you to save today, I pray, Lord. That's our prayer. We give you credit for every good thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated if you would, please. Mr. Alexander Christie, you are flying. Amen. You yes, are sir. flying. You are moving. I'm going to go quick, Pastor. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here at Fellowship Church. We're so glad you're here. If today's your first time here, first of all, welcome. We're glad to have you. We love and appreciate you. Uh, if you're willing to, please fill out that guest registry that's right there on your worship guide that you got. Or you can meet us out at the Welcome Center and fill out the same info. And out there, they'll give you a little gift bag. We'd love for you to just uh, be able to stay in touch with you, say a note of thanks this week. Thank you all, everyone turning in online uh, on Facebook, and we're just so glad you're, do you're with us this morning. Send us a Facebook message or an email. We'd love to stay in touch with you as well. And then silence your cell phones, please. And we want to say a huge thank you to everybody who came out yesterday for that fall festival. What an incredible turnout. What a great group of volunteers. We absolutely could not have done it without you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You made a difference yesterday in our town. Thank you for that. And we also have our middle school, high school group getting together tonight. If you want any information about that, please go on over to the Welcome Center. There's a little card they can, uh, they'll give you with the time and uh, all that good stuff on there. So please check that out tonight. Lots of Bible studies going on here at the church. If you have any questions about them, they're all in your worship guide. Or you can give us a call at the office. If you signed up for uh, Monday night, men and ladies, don't forget you're starting tomorrow night. So please make sure you're here. Grief Share every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, right before CR. And Celebrate Recovery actually has a huge extra special Wednesday coming up. It's their third anniversary, uh, starting at uh, 6 o'clock out there in the 40, right after Grief Share. They're going to be meeting out there with a great meal, coming in here for some testimony time, but also a huge, huge concert. Third anniversary at the church. We're super excited about Celebrate Recovery this week also. And that's that. And Senior Fellowship coming up on Thursday. If you haven't signed up yet, please sign up on your way out today. Uh, we're going to be doing lasagna. Uh, we're going to be providing a great dessert. Please bring a side dish that day. We really, really would appreciate it. And we have a special guest uh, family coming in. There's a couple in our church that loves music. they got a good ear for music, and they found these folks. And they're going to come in and perform. And it's going to be a really, really fun, fun afternoon, all for free. Just bring a side dish, please, and also sign up on your way out. And we also have, right uh, shortly after that event on that Thursday, we're going to be doing this here, um, just trying to provide a little information for anybody still struggling with getting their insurance companies to do their thing. We're not affiliated with this group whatsoever. We just wanted to provide it. They asked for a place to meet, and we're helping provide that. So if you have any issues, or if you know somebody struggling, uh, we encourage you to come on out and check out to see. Completely nonprofit outfit. Yes, sir. M Women's Prayer Breakfast coming up on the last Saturday of the month. Please sign up, ladies, on your way out today. And Safe Walk is coming up. I know we just asked for candy, but if you don't mind bringing a little bit more, we'd appreciate it. But more important than the candy, we'd love for you to sign up on your way out today. What are you doing, Chris? Uh, we'd love for you to sign up on your way out today to, to either plug into the Safe Walk down on Dearborn, which is sitting in a chair giving candy to kids, or having your car here at the church doing the trunk or treat. So much fun. We have a blast here. Larry's going to be doing a chili here for us and all that good stuff. We're going to have a great, great time um, just getting the word out because Mark Twain goes nuts uh, with Halloween stuff and we they park in our parking lot so we're capitalizing on that by reaching out to them giving them tracks showing them we love them and just having a good time so please plug into that as well and right right now all right yes sir please can we say hi to Phil again oh. you all right and Phil loves, he loves our town, loves people, and, uh, and I love him. I used to be bigger than him. Isn't that crazy? Tell us what's going on. You got a minute or so. Do it. Come on. 60 seconds. Go, baby. Talk to us. So as soon as I got here this morning, Gary always has that energy. You know the Gary energy. And the first time I met him over 30 years ago, I was 11 or 12 years old, and he still had that crazy energy. And he's scary when you're a 10-year-old, and he's running up at you just trying to hug you. And you're like, who is this crazy? This stranger danger. So the first time today when he was sizing me up, he gets next to me and he's like, you're getting bigger. And I'm like, he's shrunk a little bit. So after, after 30 years, I am bigger than Gary, except he's still got a little bit more girth than me. 
I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just stating the facts. So, uh, yeah, th did I get an extra 30 seconds for that? Okay. Okay, so first off, I want to say thank you for allowing me to come up here. And on Saturday, November 4th at the Cool Today Park, which is the Atlanta Braves Stadium, uh, they are hosting an event we're doing with a Rodney Atkins concert. And we are going to be having celebrities play. And Congressman Stubbe is also playing in the event. 100% of the proceeds from that event are going to help law, law enforcement, firefighters, military, and their family members in our community here. And an extra connection to that is we have two members of My Warrior's Place board. That's Mitch and Shannon, uh, the Messenbergs. So we are very thankful for them. And uh, the programs that we have out there and the families that we have helped over the past 15 plus years that we've been working in the community, it's amazing. So we need you guys to come out. We are not selling tickets here. Gary, I told Gary we're not. We're going to have flyers out back. I'll be standing there out back. 100% of the proceeds going out there, Major League Baseball players. If you guys remember, I'm going to highlight one more person up there, the gentleman on the left under Rodney Atkins. He is, uh, you guys remember the Sandlot, the old movie Baseball, the Sandlot? You're killing me, Smalls. He, he's, the, he's the fat kid that was the catcher, and he looks exactly the same. He's like one of those immortals. <laughs> He has not changed. He's like, guys, I haven't changed a bit, and I'm going to have fun. And we're like, yes, we want that energy. So if you have Saturday, November 4th open, it starts at 3 o'clock. 100% of the proceeds go back to helping our heroes and their families. And my time's done. Thank you, Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. All right, and this is uh, big. Next week, we're going to have the uh, little shoe boxes out here. We did it years past. Last year, we skipped it because of Hurricane Ian going on. Uh, but we're going to get back on the horse this year. we got a quick little video for you this morning to encourage your heart. Three, two, one. When that shoe box is open, they're overjoyed. You can see them shouting, jumping. They are excited. This is the first time those children are receiving the shoe boxes. They are so happy. Every box is important because every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. If you get the heart of the child, you will reach the heart of the parents, you will reach the heart of the family, and then you will touch the community. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. Isn't it incredible? how these gifts touch the lives of these children. Every year we see tens of thousands of children discipled. And we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes. Thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. Awesome, so we're just asking if you don't mind, pray about it this week, uh, and just grab as many boxes as you can do, fill them up, and bring them back here in the weeks, coming weeks, and we're just gonna send them four corners of the earth, and you're spreading the gospel and Christ's love through this. So it's an awesome, awesome thing to be a part of, uh, and we just thank you in advance for doing so. And this is Our Town. Thank you for wearing the shirts, the hats, uh, putting the bumper stickers on your car. It means everything. It gets people here to the church. Uh, if you want to be a part of someone's testimony and probably not even know it, uh, just do that. Put on a shirt, go to Walmart, put a smile on your face, and it makes a connection to a ministry where they're going to hear about Jesus Christ. So we ask you to do that. Thank you so much. And we thank you also for being givers here, faithful givers at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. Give2fc.com, super easy way to give online. Um, and the P.O. Box, of course, everyone up north, thank you for watching with us this morning. We love and appreciate you. And we thank you so much for those notes of encouragement as well. And we have hospitality right after this service, so please stay for the next service. Whole different service coming up, uh, but we're going to feed you during halftime. And we just would love for you to go on over there, make a new fellowship friend this morning. And thank you for your patience with all these announcements. We love and appreciate you. Have a great day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, buddy. I know it's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit crazy today, but we're crazy. We can do it. Amen. Can you believe Phil Mockler talked about me like a dog? Like a dog. Now, you know what? I'm the kind of person, when people come up and tell me, hey, you're getting fat, you're gaining a lot of weight, hey, bring it on, because that's what helps me go on a diet. If enough of you say it, I will receive that. Amen. Oh, look at the grandbaby. That's what's really important. How are you doing? Wow. 
Amen. I don't know how we get anything done. Now, you can't be down there when I'm talking. All right. Amen. What's the song today? It's called Gratitude. It's called Gratitude. Now, this is a song that sort of touched the band, ain't it? Yeah, I think quite a few people, but it's just quite a humble. A few. Say it again. It's just a humble conversation with God and your unworth and just trying to give him what you can for what oh, he's done for us. Man, sounds like a good song. I know it touched the band. It's a brand new song for you today at Fellowship Church. Let's thank the Lord for salt water this morning. Tell him we love him and appreciate him. Amen.
holy Are you Lord God Almighty Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb Holy Holy Are you Lord God Almighty Worthy is the Lamb 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 So I throw my hands And praise you again and again Beautiful church, sing it. It's all that I have is a house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. Let's thank the Lord one more time for him today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we'll do that one you had. I think they had another. We're going to probably do that next week. Is that okay? You didn't have it. That's even better. I told you three. That's great. I, you remember. That's great. Amen. In just a bit, uh, we're going to have our offering. We thank you for giving to the Lord's work. We'll go ahead and do that now. Miss Karen will play. And then after that, we're going to have Paul Lodato sing a song that you're very familiar with. Amen? Right before I speak this morning. And uh, looking forward to a great time in God's Word. But thank you for giving to the Lord's work. Yesterday on the hayride. How many of you rode the hayride with me yesterday? Some of you were on the hayride. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Amen. Now listen. Here's what I told them. I told him how we started the church 21 years ago in my house. I told him I didn't know what I was doing, but look what God did. Amen. And I told him it was done debt free so that we could do things for free. Amen. Can you imagine if you had a $10 million loan, your, your bill would be about 100 grand a month. Your, your bill would be 100 grand a month that you paid the bank. And it would take you 15 plus years to pay that off. Okay, that'd be a lot of money on a church. Yes or no, amen. And most of that would be interest. So we choose a different road here. We choose to do everything debt free. Can you say debt free? Or die. Period. Amen. That's the plan. So we've got a brand new facility we're looking forward to building for children, for youth, for Bible study classes. We're just maxed out in a lot of our Bible study classes. It's, it's, it's a truth. I also want to build a, a beautiful prayer garden for the community, for us and the community. To you. So that's happening. We've raised a little over a million dollars now for that project. It's probably going to be closer to three. We know the crazy economy going on. But we're going to stay steady regardless. Amen? Period. Got it? But today's offering goes to help meet the needs of our ministry. But yesterday when I told those people it was for free. Free horse rides, free, free hay rides, free hot dogs, popcorn, homemade baked goods. How many made some baked goods? Can I see your hand? They were crazy good. That's your, I'm, you're part of my problem, okay? I'm just telling you. They were crazy good. We don't have shoddy stuff. If you make shoddy stuff here, we'll get on to you. You hear me or not? But uh, I was able to share that with them, how we loved on them. And guys, you, you, they, they said this, thank you. Not all of them, but most of them, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So when you give to the Lord's work on behalf of people yesterday, thank you. Amen. We just appreciate what you do. And you're a big blessing. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you can't give it cheerfully, we ask you to hang on to it. Also, if you're a single mom and you're struggling, 
please pay your light bill and don't throw it in here and think God's going to give you light bill money by Friday because your lights are going to be off on Thursday. <laughs> Take care of your family, amen? Come on. So we just believe in giving because God's good to us. So thank you so much. And uh, Coach, come on and pray for us, buddy. Praise the Lord. And uh, Coach, congrats to those Lemon Bay manta rays again the other night. Amen. The team's 7-0. and oh. Listen now, hang on, hang on. We're going to stay humble, right, Coach? We got a work to do, right? Amen. When do we play next? Who are we playing? That's a tough school. Wow. Defending state champ. What time? I think y'all might want to come to a ball game Friday night at the Lemon Bay High School Auditorium at the big old field, the Veterans Stadium. What do y'all think? Lemon Bay bless that, versus that Naples school down there that was state champs last year. I think this is going to be a game this week. Amen? Yes or no? Come on. But we love the coach. And the other night he said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And he loves those boys and he just, he just teaches them, man. I'm really proud of our coach. Amen. Can we thank the Lord for him and just let him know you're, we're with you. We're with you. We're with you. Amen. Another coach. Pray for us, buddy. Come on. Former coach. Yeah, you're still coach. You coach me now. Come on. Since we're throwing you under the bus. Yeah. I've been associated with you for 23 years now. Yes, yes. And we've been out to eat a lot. A lot. <laughs> that could be our problem. It could be. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I'm still going. <laughs> Come on. Go, buddy. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for the great day that we can come and worship Bless you, me. Lord. Hear our messages and uh, look forward to hearing Mr. Delgado sing and yeah. bless us with the talents you've given him, Lord. And thank you for Congressman Stubbe going to be here to preach. And we thank you for Phil and his group that, that uh, touches people special to us, Lord. And our, our police officers, our EMTs, our military, Lord. We just thank you. We need places for like, like that for them, Lord. We thank you for that. We pray that people support them, Lord. We thank you for this offering. We ask that you bless it to the church and whatever you want us to do with thank you for the great thing that happened yesterday with the fall festival just many many people came out and thanked us and just kept thanking us and thanking us and we just thank you lord for providing for us amen. we ask you to bless this offering bless the giver we ask this in jesus name amen, amen. thank you y'all be seated thank you much thank you coach love you buddy amen for you giving online today thank you so much and uh, we appreciate you and uh, it's pretty amazing what you do, watching us online and supporting. Thank you so much. And uh, I don't know what else to say, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Amen. God bless.
What was the name of that song? The what? The King is Coming. Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen today and everybody serving us. Amen. Well, we're going to have Mr. Paul Lodato, otherwise known as Delegato. Anyway, no, it's really Lodato, Paul Lodato. Amen. Love this guy. How long have you been manager of this Christian Television Network down there? A little over 18 years now. It's went fast, Pastor. I remember when you got the job. I used to be on your show. That's right. You were on every week. I hope you come back. We need a good voice like this that's what? authentic. Mm. and transparent with no religion and ugly and beautiful <laughs> amen come on paul's going to sing a song you're going to love welcome him right now to sing usa amen let's play that track roger god is good amen you can sing it with me and i salute all the veterans if i can get more music in my ears my miracle ears working y'all <laughs> If tomorrow all the things were gone I worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my family and my wife I thank my God above To be living in America Because the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA we salute you, men and women, from the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit on down to Houston, from New York to L.A. There's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died And gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Sing it! To be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died And gave that right to me And I gladly stand Still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this man. God bless the USA. God bless the USA. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. What a singer. One more time. Thank the Lord for him. What a singer. Woo! <laughs> we have in church. Amen. Amen. Y'all be seated. Man, I got a lot to follow today, don't I? Man, alive. Wow. I love that, Paul. Remember your voice years ago? You reminded me of Michael Jackson. And that's a compliment. Michael Jackson could sing. I don't care what you say. But I heard you when you were younger, but I think his voice has gotten better. 
How old are you now? And when I met you, you were single. You were single like a Pringle, he says. <laughs> he got married. And your wife's name? Yvette's watching his mom today, and they wanted to come, but mom's home, and they have to take care of mom. That's what a good son does. We love you and appreciate you. How many know Paul? You see him on television sometimes. Many of y'all in the house today? Christian Television Network. Yeah, there's a few of you, but Christian Television Network down out of the Fort Myers area, but it beams a lot, and 10 counties, and we're one of them, but he's a good man. I love him, and I appreciate him. Amen? And uh, he has a lot to do with Christian films now, some of these Christian films. you got one coming out right now called Ordinary Angels, February 23rd. It's coming out of Hollywood, and he invited me and Kim with a group to see the film before it ever comes out. And I saw it uh, a few weeks ago. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. It's got a good film. And uh, it's, uh, what's nice, it reminds me of my, my drunk mama. It reminds me of how, that, and what, a person like that, God can get in their heart and do something. Amen? Powerful, powerful. You're going to enjoy that. Let's go to God's Word. Here we go. We see what's happening today on television. We see what Hamas, who are terrorists, have done. They've gone into Israel, and they have uh, slaughtered men, women, little babies. It's a fact. Y'all hear me yes or no? It's evil, cannot be tolerated. I've been to Israel about a dozen times. Does not make me an expert, but I tell you one thing, it does make me have a love for that land and a love for those people. I've not been to the kibbutz. These are communities like farm communities where people get together and they actually team up and have gardens together, and they usually have them on the border. They're really the first line of defense in that country. And they're just, just God-fearing people that just want to love their family, and uh, they're really the purest of the pure over there, to be honest with you. And, uh, but I have been to a kibbutz up north near Lebanon and Syria, and we were warned when we were there, you know, this is a danger zone. Things, if it happens, it's going to happen here first. And so I got to experience some of that years ago. So my message today is on the miracle of Israel. The miracle of Israel. Can you say that out loud? The And if you're like me, or like I would have been, I might not have known a lot about Israel. And I'd like to share it with you this morning. I think it's important as you watch the news, I want you to be able to have a deeper and stronger faith in Jesus Christ. And in, and in, and in His Word. So let's go now to the Word. The miracle of Israel. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Say that out loud. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Say that last part. They shall prosper that love thee. You're going to find in this message today, there was one country, one country, one country, one country that stood with Israel. One country. And you just happened to live in it. Would you say, don't care, don't care what, where you came from, whatever, would you say the United States of America is the most prosperous and the most blessed country on the face of the earth? Would you say that, yes or no? Do you believe that, yes or no? Do you believe that? Amen. Even crazy left-wing lunatic Hollywood people, I believe America if this happens. It's funny, they never leave. Where are they going to go? I'm going to go to Canada. Then they change their mind quick. You're blessed. Why are you blessed? Why is this land blessed? Well, we were founded on God's principles. But maybe also we're blessed because we stood with Israel. Is that what that, put that verse up again. Is that what that verse says? They shall what? They shall what? How many would say in your life you are a person who has prospered? Let me see your hand. I have prospered. How many have more today? You can't believe it because the way you grew up. Look at you now. Let me see some hands. Look at me now. What? Let's talk about it. The miracle of Israel. By the way, it's good to have y'all back. Yay. I love it when people start coming back. Keep going, Rog. I want you now we're going to go to the Bible. That was the Bible. Let's go to some more Bible. Let's listen to Jesus' prediction before his crucifixion. Oh, Jerusalem. It was in my message last week. And I'll get back to that series again. A kid again. But today, a special day. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that kill the prophets and stone them which are sent unto you. How often, Jesus says, would I have gathered your children together? Say it with me. Even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings. Say it with me. But you would, you would not. Jesus came unto his own. Say it with me if you know. And his own what? Received him not. And he died on a cross for you and me. And it's hard to believe that that was planned before the foundation of the world so you and I could be saved. And God had a people that Jesus was going to come through. The lineage of Christ would come through the Jewish people. And you and I are blessed because of that today. Amen? Keep that in mind. But Jesus told his disciples and to the crowd that day, Your house is left unto you desolate. I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till I come again. And you're going to say, say it with me, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Then he goes on. Jesus went out. He departed from the temple where he was. His disciples came unto him to, to show him all the buildings. Let us show you around, Jesus. Can you imagine such? And Jesus said, See you not these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another. That's not going to be thrown down in this place. What? That was his prophecy. Before he was crucified, this whole place is going to be destroyed. Well, what happened in A.D. 70? The Romans under Titus besieged the city of Jerusalem. Read about it in your history books. For some watching or you're here today, you don't believe the Bible, read this in your history book then. This is what Jesus said before it ever happened. You've got a God who's not intimidated to tell you the future. I would encourage you to believe him and not those that come up to you and tell you I got a word for the future. Most people that do that don't even read their Bible or don't even know their Bible. Go to the Bible. God's got plenty to say about the future. And he, got, he says some hard stuff. Like, you see all this? It's all going to be destroyed. Not one stone left upon another. Well, he looted. Titus looted and burned the houses, took the treasures, the furnishing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, according to history, he even did what? Say it out loud. He what? Who does that? Let's just grab some rocks. We going. That's craziness. Jesus predicted it. Tens of thousands of Jews perished in that event. We could be seeing that right now before our very eyes. What's happening now, you know it as well as I do. They're surrounded by people that hate them. The difference is we used to have a country that stood firmly with them. We've got people now saying they stand with Israel that I don't believe what they say because they've lied to me already. It's a mess. Is it a mess? College campuses, but it ain't just college campuses. Whole parts of cities, tens of thousands of people. And I'm not saying these are all bad people. I'm not, but they are so deceived. Tens of thousands during this time of the young and healthy survivors during this time, the siege and destruction of Jerusalem, they were sold into slave markets. According to Josephus, historian, as many as 500 Jews a day were crucified before the walls of Jerusalem to make the defenders of the city surrender. Talk about hostage taking. Talk about crazy. But some of the Jews, can you say some of the Jews? Some of the Jews. God has a remnant. Some of the Jews remained alive and in the land. How? How? In AD 132, a new era of Roman persecution began. And you can read about it. Roger's just going to go now. Even in the 6th century, 43 Jewish communities continued to exist in Israel. They weren't a country, but they were still there. They were hanging on. They were hiding. Mohammed led savage raids against Jewish settlements. You can read all about that. The Byzantines continued Jewish persecution down through the ages. Israel is a miracle. Are y'all hearing me today? As you're looking at this, what's this all about? It's about a miracle. 
In the seventh century, Muslims invaded. They erected a shrine. I've been there multiple times on the Temple Mount. Put Islam right there in the dead center. For the next 1,000 years, 1,000 years, Mongol armies, Muslim armies, crusaders from Europe, Turkish armies waged war over Israel, and the Jews were always caught where? How many would say you don't know much about maps and maybe the Middle East, but you know this much, they caught in the middle. How many would say that? They caught in the middle. How'd you like to be caught like that? North, south, east, west. And on the backside is a sea. And so that's why Iran wants to wipe them off into the face of the earth. He wants to push them all the way, they want to push them all the way into the what? To the sea. During the Middle Ages, Jews changed their attire. They tried to fit in to the upper and middle class to escape persecution. And you've seen these kind of outfits they wear. Some of the Orthodox still wear the what? The black coats. The unusual hats, many of these are the Hasidic Jews. You see them in New York. You see them over in Palm Beach, all over Israel. This happened in the Middle Ages. Why? So they could try to fit in so somebody wouldn't kill them. Y'all hear me or not? Say. I know they don't look incognito now, but back in the day they did. Say that out loud with me. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall what? That Now, who said that? God said that in his word. Why y'all for Israel? It's funny how big and bad we get as a country. We think we have blessed ourselves. Look at me how blessed. That's why we think we can go to heaven on our good works, because we're stupid people. And we're very arrogant for God to give his son on a cross, and somehow we think we're good enough to go to heaven on our, on our good works. Guys, I'm going to hammer you with that till the day I'm dead. Only Jesus, only way. But also, we're all, all our blessings came from the Lord. All our blessings came from God. How many had a God-fearing daddy or mama or grandma or great-grandma? Can I see some hands? That's most of us in the room, ain't it? Maybe it won't right there above me. I had a drunk mama. Thank God she got saved later. But behind mama was my grandma, Miss Beulah Reynolds. She was a God-fearing woman that loved the Lord. Amen. That's what made this country the country we are today. Y'all hear me or not? No, it was us and our inventions. Our inventions are taking us right off a cliff. It's God and always has been God. It'll always be God. And we should believe his word. Let's keep going with some history today. Maybe we'll come more current now. Israel, the final solution. The annihilation of a nation. What? What? Who would say such a thing? Want to annihilate a people off of the planet? Destroy them? That could never happen, right? It did happen. It happened in some of your lifetime. How many in this room, you were born before 1940? Can I see some answers? There anybody? There's several of you in the, in the room today. How many of you were born in 50, 1950 or earlier? Did you ever hear about a man named Hitler? Say, this happened in your lifetime and in my lifetime. The annihilation of a nation. Here's what Hitler said. By the way, Hitler dropped out of school. Really didn't like people that much. But one thing he had going for him, he was a pretty good communicator. Started going to Nazi meetings in Germany. Led a rebellion, but the police put it down. He got five years in prison for it, but he served nine months. Those nine months, he wrote his book, Mein Kampf. He got out of prison, started having followings with his book, and then the chancellor of Germany, von Hindenburg, put him in charge, made him basically the president. When von Hindenburg died, Hitler took over. That's how all that happened. What? How in the world can that happen? Because the Jews are God's chosen holy people, and they have... They've been hunted down by the devil like a dog. And if the church don't tell you, who's going to tell you? Here's what Hitler said. He said, if I can send the flower, the young boys, the young men of the German nation into the hell of war, 
without the smallest pity of spilling their precious German blood, then surely I have the right to remove millions of an inferior race that breed like vermin. He saw them as rats to be exterminated. Can you believe that? Yes or no? Amen. How can Hamas go in, butcher parents of small children, and then butcher the babies and the young children? Who could do such a thing? Are y'all listening to me today or not? Well, if they're not people, if you don't see these people as people, would you say people matter? How about all people matter? Okay. I know Palestinians matter. I get that. But so do these people. And you can't let people butcher your people. Okay? I don't know how it's all going to end. It could end just like the Bible is saying it's going to end. It's not going to be pretty. How many think over the last year or two or three or maybe even five, you're living in the last days? How many? Let's do a quick poll. Wow. How many lifted your hands? You've been going to church a good bit of your life. Let me see some of those hands. Wow. So these are church-going people that are telling you today they believe they're living in the last days. It's just not what a wild-eyed preacher saying it. It's crazy. We're already, there's a, you know we're at war, right? Yes or no? We're not at war. We are at war. Anytime you send billions of dollars to Ukraine and you provide them with missiles to kill another people, another country called Russians, you at war with Russia. And the sides are already picked. Sounds vaguely familiar to what the Bible says. China, Russia, Iran, and I guarantee it, we've seen it with this incident, what's happening right now. Every one of the Stan brothers will get together. Iran, Afghanistan, Tibetan, you name every one of them, they're going to come together. Even Jordan. Saudi Arabia, that was supposed, they were going to be friends and make peace with Israel recently. You don't hear much about that anymore. Matter of fact, you hear some things you don't want to hear. It's an ugly time. The Holocaust. We're talking history today. This word, the Greek origin, literally means, say it with me. The word Holocaust means what? Sacrifice by... The Holocaust was a systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored persecution and murder of approximately 6 million Jews by Nazi regime and its collaborators. During the era of the Holocaust, German authorities also targeted other groups because of their perceived, say it with me, racial inferiority. These groups included gypsies, the Polish, Russians, disabled people, and many others. During World War II, extermination death camps were established for the sole purpose of killing men, women, and what? One of the saddest things I've ever seen is in Israel. A memorial with just thousands and thousands of shoes, their baby shoes, where all these children were killed. And when you go into this memorial, the weeping, the crying, it's unbelievable. It's real to these people. These were their people, their children. These camps, Auschwitz, Treblinka, Sobobor, Majdanek in Poland, Buchenwald in Dachau in Germany. Over 11 million people died in the Holocaust. I thought it was just six. Can you say 11? Six million were Jews, but wait a minute, what about the other ones? Three million were what? It's no, it's no doubt that Christian intolerance is on the rise big time in our own country. Yes or no, is that true? You mean parents wanting to raise their children, can't go to a school board meeting and speak their mind? You mean we've given our kids to the state? Are you kidding me? And in our last few years, some of these parents have been deemed as terrorists. Since when is it a terrorism to care for your babies? But it's a good thing if you kill babies. We are screwed up as a nation. Another two million were gypsies. When I went to Romania years ago, I could not believe the way the gypsies were treated. Were treated. 
the verbal things I heard people to say to women and children right in front of my face on the street, the way they would treat these people like dirt. Isn't it interesting? What jokes you used to hear? Pollock jokes. Isn't that funny? Well, you got Hitler to thank for that. Did y'all hear me or not? And some of you do that, so go and look in the mirror. These are people that matter to God. All people matter. Even people like Gary Clark, the son of a drunk, matters. Y'all hear me? Disabled people, POWs and others. Raj, we got to go. The Holocaust represents 11 million lives that abruptly ended the extermination of people, not for who they were, but for what? They were. Maybe that makes more sense now, why people would go into farmlands and butcher people. Because they're not people. They don't see them as people. In 1933, the Jewish population stood at over 9 million in the world. Most European Jews lived in countries that Nazi Germany would occupy or influence during World War II. By 1945, the Germans and their collaborators killed nearly two, say it with me, two out of every what? Two out of every three Jews as part of the final solution or the annihilation of a nation, the Nazi policy to murder all Jews in Europe. Wow, surely if you kill two out of three of the nine million and there's only three million left and they're spread all over the place and they've been decimated, everything's been taken away from them. Matter of fact, if Jews served in World War I with Germany, their names were taken off the memorials. Their names were taken off the memorials. They bled and died and gave their life for freedom for their country. Their names were removed from the memorial because they aren't people. Boy, when your country turns on your veterans or you see your politicians stand with veterans and it's just lip service, your country's in trouble. So this would be the end of Israel, right? No more Israel. No more Jews. Say that with me. Not. How many of you had given up on your life before? Let me see some hands. You'd given up on you. (laughs) Not so fast. With God, all things are what? The Psalms, every major prophet, a majority of the minor prophets foretold the return of the Jews from all nations as a prelude to the Messiah coming again. What? Even in Deuteronomy, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He will have compassion upon you. He will return and gather you from all nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered you. Tons of scripture. I will bring you out from all people. I will gather you out of all countries wherein you're scattered with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, with a fury poured out. Many Christian scholars during the Dark Ages, this bothers me. During the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages, they tried to explain the scriptures because there were not very many Jews at that time. They basically said that God's prophecies can't be true if it's with Israel. So in my Bible teaching, I actually had hints of this years ago when I was taught in seminary, that that the church was the new Israel. A lot of churches believe, a lot of people teach that. You know why they taught it? Because they can't believe the Bible. That's why a lot of Christians believe in evolution, because you can't believe verse 1 of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But see, that can't be true because scientists came along in the late 1800s named Darwin, an idiot as far as I'm concerned. When you say God didn't create people, I don't care what you say. That's the way I look at you. Don't mean to be ugly. I guess that's ugly. I did stand on Darwin's grave in the Sistine Chapel, and I said, you're dead. He ain't. I did that. I did it on purpose. I know that's ugly, but guys, listen, listen, listen. We don't need to explain away Israel. We just need to start believing the Bible. Let's look at it. Keep going. They became impatient. They tried to explain it away, et cetera. I don't don't line up with these people at all. Here's what James says. Be patient. Say that out loud. Be what? 
Therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, or the last days, behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. He has long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. So Israel can never become a nation, not after what Hitler did. Surely after his massacre of millions, Israel is never going to be able to come back to their land. Never! Never! Keep looking. Help me. Two out of every three Jews were murdered. What family of ten could come back from that? Much less a whole people? Isaiah says, hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. They shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders recompense of his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered with a man-child. Who hath heard of such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Can a nation be born in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. I'm almost done. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth? Says the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says the Lord? Rejoice you with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you that mourn for her. No way. No way Israel can become a nation. Would you say it with me? On May 14th, 1948, the Jewish state of Israel was finally there's no way. This can't happen. It did happen. How many of that happened in your lifetime? Jesus said in his word, I don't know exactly what a generation is, but he said this generation that sees something like this, you're going you're gonna to see the Lord. That's craziness. There's a newspaper the very day it happened. Reality. The first independent Jewish state in 1,900 years. Can you say 1,900 years? Ah, this happens every day. It's never happened but once. It only happened with Israel. And God said it would happen, and that's after Hitler, Hitler said every one of them are like rats and we'll kill them all. That's happened in Tel Aviv as the British mandate over Palestine came to an end at midnight on Friday and was immediately subjected to the test of fire. As the state of Israel was proclaimed, the battle for Jerusalem raged with most of the city falling to the who this time. This couldn't happen. There's no way. At the same time, who was our president? His name was who? President Truman. I think within five hours, he announced the United States would recognize them as a country. Have you ever thought from the 40s to now? What's happened to our country? I'm not talking about the bad. I'm talking about all the amazing technology, all the amazing things that's happened in our country. We saw growth. We saw things happen like we've never seen before. Could it be that God blessed us for standing with Israel? I don't know. It sure don't hurt. A few hours later, Palestine was invaded, uh-oh, by what? Muslim armies. You're hearing it on TV now. From the where? From the where? And from the where? It's happening again right before your very eyes. You might say, why would you give this message today? Well, I want you to see your Bible. I want you to make sense of your news a little bit. I want you to be on God's side. Now, God's not for the murder of people. God's not for wars. He loves people. However, sometimes wars happen and wars are necessary. You've got to do something to protect your people. Well, if you rely on government to do it, good luck. We see our own country, 7 million people coming across. You don't have a heart. I have a heart. But why can't we do things by the law and legally in our country? What's wrong with legal anymore? Yes or no? Say. What's wrong with not going into a store and stealing stuff? Can't we just be right? Isn't that crazy? Yes or no? Jews have returned to Israel from 120 nations. 120. God's word said they were, would return from all nations. Fear not, I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east. I'll gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up. To the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that's called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. 
You're my witnesses, says the Lord. You're my servant whom I've chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. In 1948, there were 650,000 Jews in Israel. Over a million more came in the 50s. Many more came with the breakup of the Soviet Union. Remember when the Iron Curtain fell? Were y'all alive when that happened? Did y'all see that? Did you see Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, say it with me. Tear down this. Who listens to an American president? Could God have been behind all of this? Many more came with the breakup of the Soviet Union at the fall of the Iron Curtain. I became famous. For this quote, it seems that behind every wall that falls, there's a Jew. Who said that? I did. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> every wall that seemed to fall, there were Jews behind it that came to Israel during the Soviet Union breakup. Crazy. Today, there are more than 8 million Jews in Israel. That is unheard of after they've been annihilated by a butcher. There are over 16 million Jews in the entire world. When Hitler started, there were nine. You see how God's math is a little bit better math? Nearly three million are in what city in the United States? You might say, there can't be that million. Go on the computer, look it up. As far as we know, such a thing as the rebirth of a nation like Israel has never happened before in history. Never have you ever seen anything happen like the rebirth of a nation. Hate to be ugly, guys, but it would be like the Indians in the United States taking over this country. How'd that make you feel? <laughs> You'd be, that could never happen. That's what it looked like for Israel. They'll never be back in their land. They'll never have sovereignty again in their land. A nation of people scattered in all the world for 2,000 years still having the desire and motivation to return to the land of their forefathers who would leave America like they're doing today and putting on the uniform and going back there to fight. It's happening as you and I turn on our TV. It's an unusual desire and God must be somehow behind all of this. This could only be explained as a what? It's a what? and a fulfilling of God's plan and purpose for Israel. I quit with this verse. Would you say it again? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, wait a minute. Why? They shall. Let's thank the Lord for his word. I'm done today. Boom. Amen. Come on, let's stand on up. I know a lot of y'all thought he will never get us out of here to one o'clock. Amen. Praise the Lord. I had a whole lot more. I'll tell you that. But not in today's message. We cut it pretty tight. Thank you, Rod. You did a great job, buddy. He's a big part of our teaching around here. You know that? He makes it. Yeah, can we thank the Lord? He makes it so we can see it. Amen. If I had you flipping in the Bible, we'd still be way back. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray together. Ask you not to be leaving right now unless you've got to go to work or you're working out front. I get that, but hang in here. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, you know me. I don't always get it right. But Lord, I, I tried today. I tried to give you credit for doing something that's never been done before. And Lord, I don't know how all things are going to turn out right now. With Israel, with the Middle East, with Russia, with Ukraine, with China, with Taiwan, with our own border. So, Lord, I'm faced with a choice. Trust in man or trust in you. Lord, I want to trust in you with all my heart. I don't want to lean on my own understanding. In all my ways, Lord, I want to acknowledge you. And I believe you're going to direct my path. That's how I felt with this message today. I saw you. I saw your hand. Ever since Jesus made that prophecy, I saw your hand. Take this word, bless it to our heart. Do it as you would, Lord, I pray. 
bring to remembrance the things that ought to be remembered. And Lord, I pray for folks today, if they died, they don't know they'd go to heaven. You're a big God. You're a holy God. You're a true God. You cannot lie. You've told us if we don't have the Son of God, then we don't have life. You said that in your word. He that doesn't have the Son doesn't have life. And God, we know you're not a man that would lie. You can't lie. We're the ones lying. We're lying to ourselves. Lord, I pray you'll help folks today that they're lying to themselves. They're saying, well, I'm a good person. I can go to heaven. It's a lie. They go to church. They're going to go. No, they're not. You said, Lord, he that has a son has life, and he that has not the Son of God doesn't have life. Lord, would you save every single one here today? And one's watching online. Lord, we don't want one to be lost. And that's your will that none perish. So, Lord, would you help every single person today to humble themselves as I lead them in prayer, in Jesus' name. Guys, I'd like to lead you in a prayer. Guys, these are perilous times. These are times, man, you need to know the Lord. You need to trust the Lord. You need to put your faith and trust in the Lord, not a church, not a preacher, and not yourself. Would you receive Christ today into your heart? He loves you. He died on the cross for you. He rose from the dead for you. He loves you. Would you put your faith and trust in him today? Can I pray with you? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done plenty of that, Lord. I ask you to forgive me. And Lord, today, on this message today, we heard about Israel, but Lord, you spoke to my heart. And today is the day I want to be saved. And so, Lord, today, best I know how, I put my faith in you, Jesus, not a church and not myself. Lord, I believe you died on the cross. Would you tell him, I believe you you rose from the grave, and I believe you love me. I believe you love me. I believe I matter to you. I believe you love me. Come into my heart and live through me. Come into my heart and live through me today and this day forward. I pray in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would raise a hand? Not to embarrass you, but say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer, and I meant that from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't have said it no better. Can I see some hands? I could not have done that any more than I just did it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Lord, bless us as we go our way. Bless these folks. Help us in the next hour. And we hope you've been happy with us. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time. Let's getting cold. Woo! Come on, go get them.